Welcome agents and home buyers. Today, Tom Morgan gives us some basic tips of a home inspection. Tom is a master home inspector, licensed in both Connecticut and Rhode Island, specializing in antique homes. And now, Tom Morgan. We're very, very fortunate today to be in a beautiful house, date of construction, 1875. I came out of the trades. Uh, I did a lot of renovation on houses. I've owned lots of houses like this. And this is what I'm very comfortable in doing. The inspection business is complicated. If you're looking at an antique house and you're a buyer or you're an agent marketing your services, it's essential that you find an inspector who has sort of come up through the hawse pipe, as we say, have worked with their hands and, and know some of the critical issues with these houses. I've inspected the oldest house in Connecticut and the shoreline. I've been up to the Hartford area numerous times in Rocky Hill, but this is certainly not the oldest, but this is a good point to start. When we're looking at houses of this age and older, we're concerned about some inherent maintenance issues. These houses are not vinyl. We say in the construction business, vinyl is vinyl. This is not vinyl. This is pristine, very skilled craftsmen built these houses, and they require the agent to communicate with their buyer the critical issues that they need to do. They need to be good stewards of these properties. It's essential. So we're looking here today at a porch. We have beautiful columns uh, supporting this porch. And uh, we were in New London the other day in a house of this age, and there was compression on these blocks. And uh, we show this is just a termite poker, but it's, it's good for illustration purposes to show where the dry rot is and where the uh, compression has happened. These particular columns uh, are constructed of wood. They're original to the house at this point of construction. Today, if we rehab this, uh, we could use some fiberglass, which would look the same uh, to the untrained eye as these wooden columns. So that would be a critical area that we would do in the inspection process. The other thing is we would look at the ceiling here because we have a uh, porch roof that could be issues with leakage. And we use something called a moisture meter on the inspection process. If we see water stainings, we would go to our tool bag, take a moisture meter out, hold it up to those surfaces, and they would give us an indication whether that leaked. And then we would deal with flashing issues and shingle issues. The inspection is a visual inspection of all readily accessible areas, but one of the most important tools we use is the flashlight. Here we're just gently touching the surface to determine if the paint's adhered or there's been any leakage from the flashing. As you notice, we're not using the sharp end of the uh, termite inspection tool. We're just gingerly touching this to see that the paint's adhered and we don't have any evidence of any water leakage from the flashing above. We're in a historical district here, thankfully, so there's certain preservation requirements, and, and one may be that we can't replace the windows. So I would uh, direct your attention that we have the original window here, what we call a sash, and the glass is held in place by darts, metal inserts, and of equal importance is there's glazing or putty. And if you look at this window closely and you're walking around with your clients, you will see that that glazing has come off. That does not represent a defect. It doesn't represent uh, an issue. It's a maintenance issue that as an agent you would discuss and as a home inspector we would discuss with our clients. We're in this beautiful porch overlooking the water. There's been some marvelous restoration done here, but one issue that uh, they forgot to complete here is you notice we've got, uh, these are steps. In the construction industry, we call these treads. You've got three treads, and then you've got a landing. One thing you should notice, this is void of a handrail. When you come out on the 4th of July having a little beverage reception, you don't want to end up in this fancy garden. So what we would recommend doing is constructing a handrail coming down here. It must be graspable so people can come down, hold on of any age, and there would be an upright post here. That certainly would just rep represent in the home inspection report a recommendation for safety of the new owners and longevity of the materials. This house at time of construction had what we call Yankee gutters. They were an internal gutter 
And after the renovation was completed here, they installed uh, aluminum gutters, which are fine. But the gutters serve a very important part, not only to direct water away from the foundation, but we've got an open porch. We don't want the water running down here and destroying the uh, deck surfaces, nor do we want ice to form here in the winter. So we talk about gutters in the report. You would, as an agent, uh, walking around, point those out also and discuss the maintenance requirement to keep them free of debris and leaves. We're on the uh, back porch. We've got beautiful corner board coming down here. We've got clavers coming down and it's exposed to the weather. And if you'll notice, we've got some dry rot here. I'm using an awl. I'm checking this to see if it's structural or cosmetic. This lower water table, as we define it, uh, has got some dry rot. By using this implement and just lightly pushing it in there, we've determined that that's cosmetic. It hasn't affected the integrity of the sill. There have been some patches put in here, which are typical in an old house. Nicely done. Sometimes they're square cut, sometimes they're scarfed, but this is the implement we would use to check this. So we've got uh, wooden clapboards here. They're butted up to the corner board. The corner board's not highly visible here because we have a downspout from the gutter, but uh, inherently with an older house, we're looking at the point of connection here um, where this clapboard or clap joins. We're just checking to make sure it's tight. You can tell by the sound of this, it may not be overly audible, but if it was loose or the nails had failed, we would see movement in the, in the clapboard and we could hear it audibly. Then we would look upward in the inspection and notice how nicely the clapboards are nailed. This homeowner has great pride and ownership, well painted. And then we would look up at the very, very beautiful detailed rake boards with all the detail and how nicely the shingles are overhanging. And you have the advantage of seeing they've changed the clapboards to some shingles up there, just terrific detail. That's the part we love about inspecting these old houses. They're a challenge, they're beautiful, they represent a bygone era in Connecticut history, and we really focus on this to give the client great understanding of the structure and the detail, and of equal importance, the maintenance. When we commence the electrical inspection and the home inspection, we start the inspection on the exterior of the house. Seasoned homeowners and new buyers think that this service drop, which my hand is around, is the ownership of the power company. It is not. And we see over time that this becomes frayed, ultraviolet with the sun, and then we get water into this meter socket, and then it ultimately goes into the electrical panel. And we all know, as new home buyers, seasoned water and electricity does not work. So we start with our clients, with the agents accompanying us. We look at the weather head at the top, and then we direct our attention here. Because if this has failed, we have issues for safety and also monetary concerns. So we're continuing the electrical inspection. We were externally previously talking about water penetration. This is the main electrical panel. They all have a door that opens like this. And then we direct the buyer's attention this is circuit breakers, not fuses. Although the house was uh, very old, they, the owner here has updated it. So the insurance ability is great. The safety for the homeowner is great. And what we do in the inspection process is all these panels, uh, doesn't matter what the manufacturer is, we take these apart, open, take this large panel off, and then we check for any mice, snakes, bad wiring, burned wires that would be in there. But the important issue for you as the agent and the buyer is we want to determine out how much power we have in the house. And that's determined by a term called amperage. We call it amps and we get a correlation. This is the main circuit breaker, it's 200 amps. This are, these are circuit breakers that provide the distribution. After we put the panel cover back together again, we take one of our labels and we secure it inside the panel or we secure it to the main breaker. That will allow the homeowner after I've gone, if they have a problem, they need to shut it down, they can open the door 
See our tag, and that's the main shutoff. It would be secured in this area. One of the issues in beautiful houses of this age with the lender and the insurance company, they want to know what the internal wiring is in the house. But what we have here is there's been a major update and we have two types of wiring here. We have Romex, which is this fancy color-coded material. It, the, the composition of that is copper. And we have something from the 1950s, which is adequate and fine where my hand is. It's called armored, flexible armor shielded cable, but we refer to it as the electricians do as BX. It's fine, it's safe, there's nothing wrong with it. The typical home inspection, particularly in a beautiful antique house, depending upon the condition naturally, and also the size of the house, generally one should allocate two and a half hours, perhaps three hours, and we're still in the basement, but the other components that are very vital to the inspection process are the mechanical systems, heating, cooling, and plumbing. As we discussed during the inspection, we encourage questions during the inspection. We want all kinds of questions. How do you fix things? How do you repair things? What are the costs? And we want communications after you receive the report. We work seven days a week. We can receive emails. We generally don't answer the phone when we're on the inspection because things are dangerous here. What we want, we have many customers who call us six months later, I want to renovate the bathroom. What's the best kind of fixture to use? So we're in the communication business as much as we're in the inspection business. So you can get in touch with us through our office. April and I work as a team. She's vital to the organization. And you can call us at 860-445-1236 or you can uh, go to our website, or you can send us an email.